Oh god, this game is gorgeous. There's nothing like a bit of lens flare in the morning. Welcome back to Tannenberg. I've kind of gone through a bit of a Verdun, Tannenberg and Isonzo game streak at the moment. I am loving this series. I was starting by making a video talking about how the games had kind of dropped off a little bit. But since getting back into it, boy, is it a lot of fun. And Tannenberg actually has a server with about 40 people on it, which is crazy. I mean, admittedly, it is only one server, so it seems like the rest of the world has forgotten about this game series. But we're still here. Me and our small group of lads, there's a guy on that MG right there. I took out the guy next to the MG, but not the MG itself. So in terms of games, I think Tannenberg... Well, for one, is a lot more beautiful than Verdun. They put in a lot of effort in the four years of trying to make this game, especially the lighting, look gorgeous. And god damn did it pay off. It is also being set on the Eastern Front way more open, and I love that feel. I just... I liked Verdun for its gritty World War One nature, and I still think in terms of immersion, it is the strongest of the three games. But having this more open setting is a lot more like the World War One games that we know and love for today. That was terrifying. I guess that's the reinforcement wave, but I did not expect them to scream in my ear. But we are going on the counter-offensive hit. In terms of reception, the game wasn't as popular as Verdun. Perhaps that is just down to the fact that it is set on the Eastern Front, but I think it's so necessary. The Eastern Front just doesn't get the same looking that the European Front does, or at least the Western Front. But so much fighting went on within World War I, and especially during Tannenberg. And no games really ever look into it. Okay, well, popping my head up there is the equivalent of popping my head up above the trenches, so we're not going to do that. Jesus Christ, lad. Even though the player base wasn't quite as big, it still had some pretty decent reviews at the time. And we are getting snuck up from the side. It was often called by many a real man's Battlefield 1, because... Battlefield 1 just didn't offer the World War 1 experience that I think a lot of people wanted at the time. And this was the real deal. I mean, I'm probably cutting out 99% of the deaths because it's probably infuriating to watch, but... Oh my god, my head nearly got taken off by a sniper. Even a gun like this, not being able to reload unless it's an empty mag. Small features like this, I think, would annoy a lot of players, which is why I don't think it ever became mainstream. But for your hardcore history buff... I don't think World War One games really have reached a peak like these guys did, or at least managed to accomplish. It's just unfortunate that it was never the mainstream, so the player base has kind of dropped off and most of the servers are full of bots. But as many of the reviews say, bots aren't necessarily a terrible thing. They actually fill out the servers quite nicely. I mean, a lot of people still say they pop on every now and then, even though the player base is dwindling because they're still able to get some fun out of it. The change being put onto the Eastern Front really spread out the player base a little bit more. It was a breath of fresh air from the trench battlefields of Verdun, and whilst I still believe they probably should have been part of the same game content-wise, gameplay-wise and mechanic-wise, it did change things up quite a bit. Moving it from a slower paced, gritty World War 1 shooter into a faster paced, more Red Orchestra style of shooter. And it still had the authentic weaponry, so it was still there for the history buffs. I mean, what other games can you think about that actually play the Eastern Front out of World War 1? I? I don't think any, because not many games really tackle World War 1. And the only ones that do, don't really lean to what makes the game actually authentic. They're starting to overrun our spawn here, so... I'm going to have to make my way out. This is brutal. Are you chasing me? God, they've actually gone into our, our little den. This guy right here. Oh, no way did we just kill each other. <laughs> so why did the game drop off? Why did the game die? And why was it just not accessible to a wider audience? to the point where the player base has dwindled to almost nothing. Well, this is why. You see, whilst authentic World War I experiences on the surface might be fun, when it actually comes down to a fun gameplay experience, not knowing where you're being shot from, not being able to have a chance to fire back, and not getting that skill cap level because you don't stay alive long enough to become skilled at the game, I think has caused a lot of issues for a lot of mainstream players because people 
aren't really into being the hardcore FPS gamer that like history at the same time. They like the battlefield, they like the Call of Duties of the world, and this just ain't it. That learning curve, I think, was a massive struggle for a lot of players. So actually bringing in people that weren't already into Verdun or history buffs in the World War One era was a definitely always going to be an uphill climb. However, the war is over. It is done. Good night, my sweet prince.